if like in real life we we would have gotten to an argument, we would have gotten to a fight, and I wouldn't have been friends afterwards because that's that's yeah. how men handle shit, right? That's that's the way we handle shit yeah. growing up. But we can't punch each other in the face over the over the over the internet. So that's we have. And to even in real life, in real life, you could have a more nuanced conversation where when you are online, if you post one sentence. That one sentence is kind of, in the other person's eyes, the embodiment of everything that you believe in. Hey everyone, Stephen here with TV Fork, and today I'm joined by Zach Soltz. Zach, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, who you are, and we'll get into the discussion about public carnivores and anything else we want to talk about, like training or anything else related to the carnivore diet. All right, uh, yeah, my name is Zach Soltz. I uh, live in Phoenix, Arizona, 38 years old. Uh, got about 20 years of experience in the gym. I uh, started carnivore about a year and a half ago, and uh, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Okay, so for those who aren't sure exactly why we're having this conversation, we had a little bit of a back and forth on one of your posts where you mentioned that humans are obligate carnivores, plants do not belong in a proper human diet, and we ended up going back and forth based off of the definition of the actual classification of obligate carnivore. Overall, with regard to diet, I think we probably agree on more than we disagree, but that's kind of where we uh, hit a little bit of a crossroads. So in terms of the definition, I don't know if you want to put your argument first or if you want me to tell mine first. Yeah. So I, I'm not arguing what the definitions are. I'm arguing that humans are incorrectly defined. We are putting to the wrong category. So I'm not saying that there aren't faculative carnivores or that, that, that you know, are, are arguing with you what a obligate carnivore is. I'm arguing that human beings are incorrectly placed into the wrong category, and that we are, by definition, by, the, by its own definition, obligate carnivores. Now, I know that you are a big fan of Dr. Chaffee, and his part of, part of the reason why you say we're obligate carnivores goes back to his definition, where there are certain nutrients that are only found in animal foods and without consuming animal meat, we are not going to be able to get those nutrients from plants. So we are obligated to consume plants, correct? Right. That's, that is my definition. And, and if you, if you want, I can go through that. Um, but I, I, and there's some questions that I would like to ask you because this is, this is why, you know, I stopped arguing in the first place is because you, I didn't feel like you were answering my question. So me trying to make a point without getting those questions answered, answered makes it impossible to reason. So that's why I blocked you. And the question, I'm, I'm guessing it was the part that pertained to plant fiber. Well, there's a, there's a few of them because it's, it's not just one. Like, I, I understand where you were coming from by saying what the definition of obligate are. I'm saying is that the, the whole, like, so we have to look at a few things, right? So we have to name our definition, right? What, what would obligate mean to you? What does obligate mean? To you? The word by itself without adding harm. Uh, if we're talking about obligate in the legal sense, it is somebody that is required to do something. If we're talking about obligate just in the standard sense, it is basically you are required to do something. But my point, going back to you with regard to the word obligate, is that we're humans and we have free will, right? So if I want to eat cake and Pop-Tarts all day, I'm not obligated to eat meat. Would it be beneficial for me to eat cake and Pop-Tarts all day? No, absolutely not. Would I develop health problems? Yes, I would. But with regard to am I obligated to eat meat, it's really going to come down to free will and whether or not I want to consume meat. Okay, so yes, what I'm, what I'm, my whole point is the, is the obligation to the nutrients, not, not, not mentally a choice, right? Because if we look at the yeah. choices, if we look at, let's say, uh, what happens to an obligate carnivore that eats plants? Okay, so you, you, you said that cats are obligate carnivores. So what happens to a, to a cat that starts eating plants? Or, or incorrectly eats their diet, right? They start eating, you know, kibble and all that kind of stuff. What happens to them? So any type of obligate carnivore, if they abstain completely from meat, if they consume plants, they will develop nutrient deficiencies. And then within, are you familiar with Pottinger's cats? No. Okay, so Pottinger, he, he performed this experiment back in the 30s, and he basically put cats on a raw food diet and on a processed food diet. And what he found was within three generations, the cats died off. So the first generation, what happened was they would just live normal lives. They would die into their old age, which is what happened to basically our ancestors. Then the next generation of cats, they started developing issues later on in life, a lot of illnesses. And then the following generation, they started having reproduction problems earlier on in life. And you can kind of see that mimicking in humans where our 
grandparents, they didn't develop problems, they just died of old age. Our parents started get, uh, developing problems later in life, and then us, our generation, we start getting a lot of fertility problems of people just not being able to uh, manage their health properly. So with regard to obligate carnivores, you can kind of think of it the same way, whereas over the course of the long run, if you completely avoid nutrients that are going to be beneficial for you, eventually you will die off and it will be the end of the species. Okay. So I'm going to use the obligate carnivore definition from Wikipedia, which I got today. I've never seen it. It says obligate or true carnivores are those diets require nutrients found only in animal flesh. While obligate carnivores may ingest small amounts of plant matter, they lack the necessary physiology required to digest it. Some obligate carnivore mammals will ingest vegetation as emetic to self-induced vomiting. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me finish a few more points. So we know that human beings can't break down plant fiber, right? That's, 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 that's the whole part of the plant. We can't break, break down plant fiber. We don't possess the necessarily cecum or bacteria to do so. We also have numerous plants that induce uh, anemic effects. Bayberry, blessed thistle, bloodroot, chaparral, lobelia, or I don't know what any of these are. I just looked them up. Yucca, okay? So we know that plants, not, most of the plants on this planet will make us sick and make us ill, okay? How much rice and poison are you allowed to eat before you'll, like, you can't even eat a tiny amount of rice and poison, you die. There's not a single meat that'll make us throw up. There's not a single meat that makes us sick, okay? Let's look at, we talked about your cats, right? So yeah. let's look at the current disease rates of human beings right now. One in two women and one in three men will develop cancer in their lifetime. 87% of Americans are meta have metabolic disease. So that means they have some level of pre-diabetes or diabetes, right? One in two gets heart disease. There are over 100 autoimmune diseases, 50 million Americans have, which 50 million Americans have, right? We don't even know what all of them are. We, we don't, we're not able to. So based on the definition, and then we'll get into also essential nutrients, because I think that's the most important part. So name some essential nutrients in plants that we cannot get from meat. And, and by essential, I think, let's, I think we both agree on the definition. Essential means we have to eat them. Otherwise, yeah, we don't have to bring them into minerals. Right. Yeah. So, so, so name some plants that we have to eat in order to get the nutrition that we need from them, that we can't get from meat. There, there is no plant that contains any essential nutrients that we can't get from meat that would be required for survival. However, it comes down again to definition because with regard to obligate carnivores, obligate carnivores need to consume meat for survival and they can't survive off plants. But in times of famine, we would have been able to survive off plants if we needed to. We wouldn't be able to thrive on them. And yeah, we would develop some nutrient deficiencies, but we would still be able to survive. And then if you also look at historically, are you, uh, are you a proponent of an ancestrally appropriate diet? I do. Yes, somewhat. Okay. I mean, I, not, I, mean I, don't know if, I don't know if all of the data is 100%, right? I don't, I don't know if it's just like, because there's also data that says that we were 98% carnivore, right? From the nitrogen isotope testing. Yeah. So with regard to eating an ancestrally appropriate diet, I'm a huge proponent of biochemical individuality. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Roger Williams's work. Yeah. Okay, so Roger Williams, he wrote a book in the, the 50s. It was called Biochemical Individuality. And he basically broke down the how we're all biochemically unique and we have different enzymatic patterns, different enzymatic profiles, different excretion rates of different nutrients. So when it comes to the macronutrients, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, we have proteases to digest proteins, we have lipases to digest fats, and we have amylases to digest carbohydrates. So depending on the proportion of, of enzymes that we have circulating throughout our body, that's going to kind of dictate what type of diet is going to be best. So, for example, let's say somebody has lysosomal protease deficiency or lysosomal acid lipase deficiency. For those types of individuals, they wouldn't be able to consume something like a carnivore diet. Same thing with something like alpha-gal syndrome. Somebody with alpha-gal syndrome, uh, aphorrhythmia, hypochlorhythmia, they wouldn't be able to consume meat because they don't have the proper they don't have the proper enzymes in order to break down those different nutrients. So. If you were to give somebody like that a meat-only diet, they would actually get worse and their health would worsen. For the, for the average person, they're going to be able to consume, they're going to be able to consume an omnivorous diet, right? A facultative carnivore diet where they're going to need to consume meat in order to get those essential nutrients. But if they consume things like plants and you know, fruits, vegetables, they're going to be able to, to, they're going to be able to consume those plants without developing diseases. And with regard to the disease rates that you mentioned earlier, a lot of the diseases that we see now, those are due to Western 
living in advancement. So prior to the agricultural and the industrial revolutions, geography would have played a huge part in our diet and what exactly we would have consumed. So if you had ancestors that grew up near the poles, it's very, very cold over there. You can't grow fruits and vegetables. You would have had to rely on meats and fats. Whereas if you had ancestors near the equator, they would have had access to fruits and vegetables because the climate in that area would have allowed them to grow those different things. Today, we're kind of a mix of everything. So if you have one parent that grew up near the poles, one that grew up near the equator, your genetic expression of what your diet would be best suited for, it could take after the parent who grew up after the pole, uh, grew near the poles, and you would be able to consume a high fat, high protein diet and flourish on that diet. Or you could take after the ancestor who grew up near the equator, you'd be able to consume more plants, things like fruits and vegetables. You would still need to consume meat, but you would be able to uh, tolerate those types of foods and consume them more. Or your genetic expression can manifest anywhere in between those. And that's basically my argument with regard to the diet. It's like, yes, meat, okay. we absolutely need meat in our diet, but depending on your genetic expression, that's going to dictate whether something like the carnivore diet would be beneficial. For example, I've been coaching now for over 18 years. And most of the people that I coach, they they pretty much do well on paleo, keto, carnivore. Those are the three main diets that people do well on when they come to see me. However, I have had people where literally they could not consume meat because they just physically feel ill and they will throw it up. Just one of my clients is an example. She is fine with things like well, eggs and cheese. But if she consumes meat, she will vomit it up just because her body, she does not produce the certain enzymes required in order to break that down. And this is somebody where she doesn't have any health problems. It's not like she developed some type of disease. It's just that the way her body is. Okay. So there's a lot you broke. There's a lot to break down there. So the first thing you talked about was like alpha gal and different genetic expression. My my first comment would be those those genetic expressions that are allowed to to occur and to get passed on now would not be happening thousands of years ago, right? So somebody with alpha gal just would not survive. One, right, and. And just the, 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 you know, the fact that somebody can survive eating plant foods, but yet, you know, one in two people are coming up with one of these diseases, to me, doesn't seem like thriving or surviving. It seems like you're dying. I feel like you're dying early. Okay. The second thing I would look at is that we have five organs for breaking down fat. Okay. You got stomach, liver, which creates bile, the pancreas, gallbladder, and small intestine. So we have five or organs for breaking down fat and only one that, that deals with insulin in the sense of pancreas releases insulin, but what is insulin's job? It's to remove sugar from the blood, not to, not to increase the sugar, right? It lowers, yeah. it. it's basically it's saying, hey, we don't want this much glucose in us, we need to get rid of it, right? So let's talk about essential, essential nutrients. We know there's no essential carbohydrate. Yes, can, can somebody you know, eat fruit and, and, and gain energy from it? Yes, okay, but we have glycation in products, we have Glycation in the brain, we're pretty sure that that's what dementia is, right? It's like the, the, the sugar that we're eating, and even, you know, plants, all plants are, are a sugar based diet. Broccoli is 67% carbohydrate. There's no way to argue that point. We know that when it's broken down, there's 67% of what you ate is, is carbohydrate, right? There's a lot of other stuff in there too, mostly water. These things are not debatable. Like, we, this, this is all science. And I understand what you're, what you're saying is that we can, we can eat those things, but they're not optimal. Right. So by placing humans in a correct category, like I don't have to eat carbohydrates to thrive. I, I, maybe some people do. Right. They say that. But, you know, there's so much nuance to it. How often are you eating? Like Paul Saladino talked about how he has to have fruit. I'm pretty sure Paul's problem was he wasn't eating enough protein in one sitting to get the insulin spike required to hang on to his electrolyte. Because if you're eating three, four, five meals a day, which a lot of people do coming from a plant based diet, that's not the way to eat meat because I eat once a day and I'm perfectly fine with that. I can go to the gym, I can do all that stuff. So there's, there's no, I don't have any issues with that. But, you know, the fact that we look at just the biology, our stomach acid, 1.5, the most acidic on the planet, our organs, right? We have five organs for breaking down fat, one that helps get rid of sugar. It just, it, all of those things, to me, place human beings in, in, the, in the obligate category, not to mention specifically just nutrients alone. We can absolutely get everything we need just from red meat alone, right? You, do you not agree with that? We all of our essential nutrients are in red meat. The whole I'm assuming, talking, you're, I'm assuming talking, you are, no yeah, yeah. Assuming you're saying no to tail, then yeah, you could get everything. You could get your vitamin C from spleen, you could get your folate from liver. The only thing really that's gonna be lacking in a meat only diet is gonna be magnesium. Aside from magnesium, you could get all the all the essential amino acids, all the essential fatty acids. 
all of the vitamins and all of the minerals with the exception of magnesium. And then magnesium, you could get that from, from your Himalayan salts. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I might go back to, too, we talk about ancestrally appropriate. Is, is a carnivore diet difficult for some people because our animals aren't being fed their proper diet? And for that fact, there's not enough magnesium in, in, in the meat. There's not enough nutrients in the meat. That's a completely different story. Our ancestors, thousands, if we, you know, we look at videos, there's, there's plenty of information that we, we ate. We were the apex of carnivores, meaning we ate carnivores, right? We were able to match the actual nitrogen from the protein of a specific animal, mostly large ruminant animals, and we know exactly what we ate, right? And less than 2% of the protein that we, that we ate, our nitrogen, came from plants. And that's going back 300,000 years ago. Like, we actually have these bones. It's been nitrogen testing. It's not, it's not you know, people say, oh, carbon dating's not accurate. Well, it's not carbon dating. It's isotope matching. So we, we know what it is. Hold on, buddy. Sorry. Okay. Go play. Go play, Daddy. Okay, go play. So anyway, that, that, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, and, and, and a lot of stuff gets lost online, right? I get it. But to me, it's like, you don't, I get 40, 50 people a day asking me these questions. And if every single person that didn't agree with me, like I spent the time to do all of that, it gets frustrated, right? So I, yeah. I ask these questions and I present my argument. And if somebody doesn't answer, hold on, you want to sit with me? All right, we'll sit. We'll say hi. Hi. Sorry. His name is Sam, by the way. Uh, hi. So... That's, that's where I'm coming from, right? And I, yeah. you know, like, I, I have a military background. I, I, I work with a lot of people that are just real short, cut to the sweet, like, you know, cut to the chase kind of, kind of stuff. Go get, them, go get it for them, okay? So that's, that's, my, that's my way of handling things, right? I don't take, I actually don't take things personally unless you talk about my family. That, that, that I take personally. And, you know, I understand what you're doing. But the, the fact is, is that neither one of us can really prove our point 100%, right? I mean, it's, the, the evidence isn't really there. So to try to disprove what I'm saying, like I posted something, it's, it's actually up to you to disprove it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we can't, I can't, I can't prove that the, 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 the proof that's not there doesn't prove that my, my information is incorrect. The main issue was just, we were arguing over the, the current established definition that exists, which is an obligate carnivore cannot properly digest plants, it would not be able to survive and we, in times of famine, would be able to survive. Well, we're not, neither of one of us are disagreeing that it would be a suboptimal way of living if we were to consume plants and that we would develop all these deficiencies. And neither one of us are really agreeing that for the general population, it is going to be beneficial for them to consume more meats unless they have one of the diseases that I mentioned earlier where they just do not have the physiological capability to break down those nutrients. So at the end you of the agree? day, it really came down to a matter of the official definition that we were disagreeing with. Thanks for hanging around until the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video and comment down in the comment section because it would really help out with the algorithm. And also share this video so we can help get this information out to as many people as possible. And also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the icon in the bottom right hand corner and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos. For those of you interested in health optimization, you can check out the video in the top right corner where I discuss the six foundation principles. And for those of you interested in optimizing your performance, then consider becoming a member. It's only $5 per month and you get a ton of perks including exclusive access to this program design lecture series playlist above my head.